Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Open Source, a place where we can have great conversations about open source, meet some fun people along the way, and just have great conversation. So today I'm super excited because my guest is Michelle Mayer from GitHub. And when everybody talks about open source, they talk about GitHub. So Michelle, do you want to say hello, introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. How's it going? Awesome. So first off, so when pe like I said, when people say open source, they immediately think GitHub because that's the world that we live in, right? So you want mm -hmm. to talk about what your role is at GitHub and, and all the open source things that you and folks over there are doing? Yeah, sure. So I work as the developer community manager. I work on the developer relations team. We get to do so much cool stuff with the community, with open source. So we really, really just try and elevate the community as much as possible. So our team works with all the open source maintainers, the top open source projects. Uh, we're into new the regions, as much so as we're bringing GitHub. So our team works with all the new regions, maintainers, like, uh, top India open source projects. One of the uh, we're into top open new regions, so we're bringing GitHub. So our team works with all the new regions, like India, Africa. We're into new regions, so we're bringing GitHub. So our team works with all the new regions, like India, Africa. We're into new regions, so we're bringing GitHub. So our team works with all the new regions, like India. Top tips to maintaining yeah, so I've been tinkering around with software and stuff for quite a while, probably more on the hardware side though. But I really came across the yeah, whole so concept of like open source and even the concept of GitHub back in 2016. Yeah, so in 2015, so not actually that long ago, so 2015, I started working as events coordinator at a big innovation precinct. So not actually that long ago. So I was running a whole bunch of really cool events, really awesome companies. Um, we had IBM, we had like AMZ, which is a big bank here. We had a lot of Really, really cool really companies. Awesome we had TEDx talks. We had IBM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. I remember because I was in that one day, yeah, yeah. day yeah, yeah. somebody yeah. walked yeah. in. It was like, hey, we want to run a hackathon. Yeah. And everyone around the office kind of like looked at one and went, the heck is a hackathon? I was like, it was like, yeah, I know what a hackathon is. It was like, you know, it's everywhere at uni and I ran a hackathon at uni. Like literally once, I said, I know what a hackathon was. So literally once. And I was able to pull this hackathon together and turn around in like less than a month actually which is when you think about it quite insane and so from there it was actually quite successful and from there everyone was like oh we all want to run hackathon so i became like the person to run hackathon and so which is where i got the name hackathon queen Oh, which we all are actually trademarks now, yeah, so that's really cool. So that's really cool. Oh, that's right, which is where I got the name Hackathon Queen. But yeah, so I started running hackathons, and the community actually gave me the name Hackathon Queen. I was, I ran 20 hackathons between August 2015 and November 2015. So it was quite a lot of hackathons in one year. August 2015 and November 2015. So it was quite a long time in August. Um, do you know the hackathon called Space Apps Challenge? Yeah, I do. 
Yep, so I got asked to run the Space Apps Challenge Melbourne and I was like, cool, that sounds great. Um, get everyone involved. You know what I'm like, yeah, sure. And someone was like, hey, you got to get GitHub involved. I got asked to run the Space Apps Melbourne and I was like, cool, that sounds great. Yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of having that. That's that, like, sure. Software platform, like, hey, you think you have people write code or write like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. You go chat to GitHub and get them involved. Yeah, like, cool. So they, like, put me in touch with GitHub. And from there, it was kind of like this, like, relationship that we had about um, sharing the GitHub message, the open source message, um, and what GitHub is here to provide for developers throughout all the hackers that we had started writing, um, why I continued to run from 2016 onwards. That was April 2016, we're here in October 2020, and I now work for GitHub on the DevRel team, doing the thing that I love doing onwards, providing information to all the rest of the developer community, open source community, and the broader the tech community as well. I think that's one of the things I'm really passionate about is bringing the message of, um, you know, software development, open source, not just to developers, but to non-developers as well. things I'm really passionate about is bringing the message of, um, you know, software development, open source, not just to developers, but to non-developers. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Not just to developers, but to yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So Pretty much, so yeah. So what is it about GitHub do you think that yeah. really resonates with the developer community, right? Because there's a lot of much, yeah. there's a lot of platforms that kind of are centered much, directly yeah. at developers, what right? Is it, um, even kind of yeah. ones that are similar to GitHub, right? So why do you think GitHub yeah. risks? There's a lot of platforms. That well, there's a few reasons. Um, let's talk about some of the features first. So obviously. The idea of GitHub isn't just a place where you host code on or you write your code and put it there. Um, let's um, talk like we kind of came up with the idea of like social coding. The right? idea of GitHub, and I isn't think that's the place big key about GitHub is it's not just about where you write, you write your code and sticking it on there. Um, like it's about being able to collaborate with everyone else. Coding. So it's the not just a you know a Git repository. It's a place where you write your code and talk to everyone else about it. And the tools that GitHub has built, you know, from say one pretty much is all about how to collaborate better with other people, code, um, so how to, uh, you know, and the tools take somebody else's project um, and work on it without breaking it, yeah, so, you know, forking a repo or taking a branch, um, how to uh, leave so comments to, on something uh, without, you know, project, ruining everything else, or open an issue, or, you know, like, seeing track changes and who actually broke them, and being able to talk about something and discuss something before you actually make those changes, so I think, like, that you know, and like, like see social collaboration change, is what really kick started the whole idea of you know people coming together and working on open source so too, right? You know, it's like before you were doing that, you had conversations really going, you know, Slack didn't exist back then, but so you had conversations, you know. Going together, and emails, and, and, you know, you had it's bits like, and pieces of doing that, code all over people's local like machines and things like that. So I think, so you know, that in itself is what emails, really like kind of drove the community. Yeah, yeah. But if we're talking about now, code all over sure, now there's a lot of like that stuff I think with similar yeah, kind of pictures, right? But it's like if we started the community, if we're talking about now and you're looking at all the platforms to start live streaming on, you're usually going to go with the platform where the community is the biggest and strongest. Like and that is the key to GitHub right now, now is that there's the over 50 million developers on the platform, there's over 100 the platform, million is the like strongest. repos, and that like that's just GitHub insane. Right so if you want to start an open source project, do you go to a platform with 50 million developers or do you go to a platform with a million developers? Do you want the 50 million talent or the 1 million talent? Like it's become that big where it's just like, it's almost like it's a no-brainer to choose that almost like it's a... Do you want the no brainer for us to choose Twitch as a streaming like platform if you're going to start, say, gaming, for example? It's just like, it, it's almost like, it's a no brainer to choose that. Almost like, it's a no brainer for us to choose Twitch as a streaming platform if you're going to start, say, gaming, for example? I know, I know, for it. I mean, I'm in the team. I'm in the line. No brainer for us to choose Twitch as a streaming platform if you're going to start, say, gaming, for example? Yeah, but like, I know, I know, for it. I mean, I'm in the team. I'm in the line. 
you're right, kind of inventing the concept of like, hey, you know, there is this group of folks that like, I'm not afraid to I mean, I'm in the same. It's not just I do some stuff and then maybe I like you said push it out to a repo and some other people take a branch or some fork or whatever. Like it's just about like collaboration. It's not just a hundred percent. Yeah. One of the things that's been very interesting at least for me with GitHub that I've seen recently. I do a lot of stuff with GitHub at my role at Microsoft. A hundred percent. The development cloud. One of the things that's like that. And so like things like code space is very interesting to me. I do a lot of stuff very interesting to me. But that something that's a little bit outside of kind of my scope is this like idea of discussions, so, right? Like yeah. GitHub discussions to me, I see that and I'm like, why wasn't that a day one feature, right? Like people love to have conversations and anybody who goes to a yeah. repo will say, oh, you go to a repo and some some of these repos have issues that have comments that are hundreds, thousands of comments, right? And they're not like anybody who goes to a repo like conversations around the particular issue. The issue then turns into kind of a mutation of a general like, is this something that we want to even do? They're not like, right? And I think discussions is a perfect place to put that sort of stuff in there. So when it was announced, I think it was that satellite, I was very much like, Yes. Like, yeah. Right. Give me some more like, so. Pretty much, and that's like the reason why we made we started building discussions, right? Is because we noticed that there those kind of discussions were happening in issues much. or were and happening on like Slack, and it was like, well, we, we started like you know, an issue was originally right? designed that you, you know, opened that those, kind you of found an issue. <laughs> so you know, let's fix this thing or let's you know, it was like have this feature. Like you know, whereas it's a lot of it designed you know, like discussions. So one cool thing you can do with discussions too is you can actually transfer an issue or convert an issue to a discussion and vice versa. So if you have a discussion, you go, hey, this is a really really cool feature. We can build. You go click convert to issue. Um, and then have that, and then the other way around too. If you go, oh hey, there's a discussion, you can't find discussions. If you have a discussion, that's converted to a discussion. It's a really cool feature. We can do it. Click the convert to issue. And then have that, and then the other way around too. If you go, oh hey, there's a discussion, you can't find discussions. If you have a discussion, that's converted to a really cool feature. We can do it. Click the convert to issue. And then have that, and then the other way around too. If you go, oh hey, there's a discussion, you can't find discussions. That's converted to a really cool feature. We can do it. Click the convert to issue. I think one of the things that is very is like the like the, the octocad itself, right? Like that is just Mona. like the fact that, yeah, like Mona, like the fact that there's like extensions of Mona you can go and you can build your is like the like you can uh, do all sorts of silly things, and I think it just adds to the developers aren't yeah, just about writing like the fact that there's like extensions of Mona like you said community and having like that. Right, so do all sorts of, I like to tell the story, and my wife, Mona. she's not technical at all, uh, but she loves Mona, like loves her, like, so, like she's got stickers everywhere, Who doesn't? she had a water, she had a water bottle that had all these amazing stickers on it, and then she lost the water bottle, she was emotionally distraught, like, so, like any good husband, Who doesn't? Like, she had a box and, like, had all these can I get stickers. these stickers? Uh, Some of them were like, she you know, was, uh, collector's edition stickers. Yeah. And so a couple, uh, you know, a couple of people reached out. Who does This is awesome. And I gave her the pack, and she was can like, best present stickers. ever. And yeah. I'm like, I've got you some pretty good presents for like, stickers. Yeah. stickers you could do. So, <laughs> There's actually somebody There's gave like a talk like a little while ago on the um, sticker culture. Yeah. And because yeah. we were really the ones who started yeah. that, the first seven <laughs> years of GitHub, the only marketing, um, first five years, first five years of GitHub, the only marketing because we were was really the ones stickers. who started that. that was it? First seven <laughs> years of GitHub, the only marketing, first five years, first five years of GitHub, the only marketing because we were really the ones who started that. That was it? First seven years of GitHub, the only marketing, first five years, like no, yeah, only marketing because everyone. Now there's everything. Yeah. Um, so if anyone, everyone, anyone is listening, you can actually get that swag yourself. So we do have a shop. Like um, I often either streaming either yeah, on Open Source Fridays yeah. or even uh, on so my own streams everyone, everyone uh, when I'm writing code as well. I'm yourself. always so often we wearing something shop, GitHub like, or you'll see a yeah, product in the background or whatever. And they're like, streaming either who really cool to have that? Like, you know, you can buy it on your own streams. Like, what? GitHub has a shop as well. I'm always often wearing something Yes, we have a shop in the background or whatever. they're like, streaming either who really cool to have that? Like, you know, you can buy it on your own streams. What? GitHub.
Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, we have a yeah, there's like so much cool yeah, stuff you can get, and yeah, you're right. Like really cool people, you know, people love that sort of stuff, and even um, the it wasn't ignite, but it was definitely build at least when um, Satya was giving his keynote. You know, you could so, see the um, Mona in the background, yeah, and there's like so much cool I stuff you can get, and yeah, you're right, like people, people love that sort of stuff, and even um, the. Like that sweet it wasn't ignite, but it was definitely build at least. That is when um, only you could help you, you know, you could yeah, see the moon in the back stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> so or only covers in yeah. 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 People love that sort of stuff, and even um, the it wasn't ignite, but it was definitely build at least. That is when only could help you, you know, you can see the moon in the back stuff. But like, only covers in I know. Well, as I said to people, you can always just buy the black one on the site, and you know, just go and get a screen printed. Yeah, but that's <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Like in stock. But like, only one covers in here. I know. Well, as I said to people, you can always just buy the black one on the site, and you know, just go and get a screen printed. <laughs> Yeah, but I was gonna say, where did you get that from? It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 the T, yeah, and the E and the D. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but basically, like, yeah, I had this made. I was gonna say, where did you get that from? It's really cool. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. So I was presenting at an event, and it happened to land in Pride Week, so I wore the T, yeah, and the E and the D. Um, yeah, I, I've got my eye on um, the open source one from Dev2 at the moment. It's like the open source is strong with this. <laughs> uh, I love the Dev community. Yeah, I've got my eye on um, the open source one from Dev2 at the moment. It's like the open source is strong with this. <laughs> Uh, I love the, the dev socks. Yeah, actually, yeah, oh, I have an Azure socks, socks on the other day too. Oh, open source oh, one from Dev two at the moment. It's like the open source is strong. I love the dev socks. I oh, I actually had a whole conversation with a group of people at Universe on how socks are the best swag ever, like over t-shirts because they fit everyone. And they're comfy, and you can wear them no matter what else you're wearing. And especially if you're a speaker, I, this is obviously I not useful right now, but when you're speaking on stage, you're often either standing or sitting. And if you sit, you're like, they're comfy. Especially if you're a guy or you're a girl wearing pants. And you sit, your pants come up just enough so you can see the socks. When you're speaking, and you get the coolest reactions in the crowd. Is so good. Like, I was seeing like ministers and stuff here in Victoria, like the cool hip one. Boy, like, it's really funky socks. And you're like, and check it out. He's wearing like slack socks today. And it's like, oh, you're just speaking. There's so much bad actions in the crowd. Is so good. Like, I was seeing like ministers. And stuff here in Victoria, like the cool hip one. Well, it's really funky socks. We were like, yeah, check it out. He's wearing like slack socks today. And it's like, oh, you're just speaking. There's so much bad action. Yeah, I think scrubs is a thing with the doctors. <laughs> they try and find the coolest looking scrubs. So I have two doctors in the family, both my brother and sister are doctors. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine when you're at family gatherings. So, yeah, I think scrubs is a thing. With the oh, doctor. it's like oh, what do you do? The giant find the coolest oh, scrubs. What, so. what, what, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. She's just the old one out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. Yeah, I think scrubs is the thing. Oh, it's like, what do you do? Oh, what's, what's, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, she's just the old one out. Yeah, what do you actually do at Microsoft? I know you're one of the senior um, PMMs, but um, yeah, I did a little bit of research. But yeah, what is your role? Yeah, no, she's just the old one out. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Why not? <laughs> yeah, so, so my job do you actually at do at Microsoft? I know oh, you're one of the so senior um, PMMs, but um, yeah, I did a little bit of research. But yeah, what is your role? Yeah, no, she's just the 
one out. Yeah. So like build an ignite, for instance. Um, so <laughs> my team so, so does so you actually to end like yourself. I know you're one of those senior um, PMs, but uh, yeah, I did a little bit of research. But yeah, what is your role? So when you see particular sessions that build an ignite, like my team is the team that you know, helps so put together those sessions, not put them together, but help making sure they're in the right narrative for the event. So for instance, we just had a night last month. Last month, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so that feels like it was yesterday now. Yeah, like the so for the Evergreen folks, that was September. Yeah, what is your That was so I worked on the Scott Hanselman development. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so that feels like it was yesterday now. Yeah, talked a lot about the Evergreen also. That was one thing, but. Uh, the area of focus, at least, that we wanted to talk about <laughs> yeah, pretty so hard was, like, you know, the uh, Scott Hanselman development. Yeah, so we talked about GitHub Postmates yeah. a lot. Man, that the feels like it was yesterday now. I've been asked by a few people to do uh, a live stream on GitHub Postmates, which I'm going to be doing. Uh, the area of focus, at least, that we wanted to talk about pretty hard was, But yeah, so, like, that's what I do. So, basically, yeah. I get so to get all the yeah. demos, and I get Man, to that feels like it's help, you know, the people that are watching some of our main key events, like, the sessions and the, the story that you're seeing throughout. But yeah, so like that's what I do. So basically, so yeah, like it's fun. I, it's one of those things where when I took the job, I'm recently I'm doing a role I started in November of last year, so I'm coming up on my yearly. Uh, it was one of those things where like this is the job, like getting to play around with all sorts of fun things. Yeah, it's fun. So yeah, it's it's been fun. I just you know continuing to do it. Plus, I, you know, the access to people, uh, like, I get to, it was you know, chat with a bunch of people that I don't want to get, like, getting to play around is always like all sorts of fun. I like that about um, our roles is you get to talk to really, really awesome people. I had a meeting um, last week with um, Sache, so it was like, oh, this awesome. is cool. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like, right? like, I like this. I don't we can do this. I, I jokingly told a friend. I like that about um, our roles is you get to talk to really, really awesome people. I had a meeting um, last week with um, Sache, so it was like, this is cool. Yeah. It's like, I like this. We can do this. I introduced myself. And they said, I like that oh, about um, so our roles is you get to talk to really, really awesome people. I had a meeting. Yeah, I know. Last week. Yeah, yeah. I know what that's so like. like this is cool. Yeah. It's, just, it's just funny. I like this. You know, I feel part of the reason why this job like that, uh, came to me uh, in, in a different way is because uh, uh, yeah, I know. That's what I was kind of doing. Yeah, yeah, I know what that's like. like. Right, so like I was building it's repos and I was like like pretty active you know, on Twitter and, and kind of doing all, doing all these things. And I think one of the things that's really resonating with a lot of companies is like, yeah, I know. Making yeah, yeah. sure that know, that's like, developers <laughs> in general are having kind of their voices heard. Like right? yeah, we talk a lot about yeah, it. exactly. Um, like what we can do for enterprise, what we can do for this, but like at the end of the day, developers are like, yeah, the yeah, things that yeah, the cops yeah, are sure yeah, that. Um, one of the things I think is really fun that that's very pertinent to right now is things like Hacktoberfest, right? Like, what, like yes. I know that Hacktoberfest is very top of mind for you, so. Uh, for yeah. the folks that, you know, they've heard of Hacktoberfest, but they're like, ah, I don't know, I don't want to say, you know, de dedicate like 20 hours a week to write a code on the side, like, what is Hacktoberfest, and like, how can you contribute without it just kind of being your yeah. focus set thing? Yeah, so Hacktoberfest was started seven years ago to really encourage people to get involved in open source because, like, obviously a lot of developers were writing code and people often work on their own things. But what we really wanted to do, well, not even us, it was started yeah, by a group so of people. Yeah, so was started um, seven you know, it's mainly headed up by DigitalOcean. Really you know, it's all run on GitHub. We're open very, source. you know, like, big supporters of Hacktoberfest and big advocates of Hacktoberfest. And so, yeah, it's about getting really involved in open source. And I think one of the coolest things about Hacktoberfest is you really don't even dedicate a ridiculous amount of time to all run on GitHub. And what I've been finding, big supporters either throughout my own streams on Twitch and or stuff throughout yes, our open source Friday streams on the GitHub Twitch channel, channel is that, that, that people, like maintainers of projects, just want other people to be involved and they are willing 
um, to give up their time to help go for someone else. So I was interviewing one of the maintainers of Superbase, which is the open source Firebase alternative. And he was like, oh, you want to learn Postgres? Yeah, come with us. Like, come and start contributing. We'll teach you it. It's like, they're not even saying, like, come and we'll help contribute to the project. It's like, come and we'll actually teach you how to write the language. He was like, boom. And I'm like, wow. And then I was shouting to, like, the maintainer of WordPress. And he was like, yeah, same thing. It's like, like they don't even you, say, like, come and we'll help you contribute to the project. It's like, come and we'll actually teach you how to write the language. He was like, boom. And I'm like, wow. And then I was shouting to, like, the maintainer of WordPress. just attacked it. He was like, like, any one of the maintainers could do it. But we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first issues for you to tackle. He was like, like any one of the yeah, maintainers could do it, like, but we make those like, available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first issues for you to tackle. He was like, any one of the maintainers could do it, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the yeah, maintainers yeah, could do it, like, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the maintainers could do it, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the maintainers could do it, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the maintainers could do it, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the yeah, maintainers could do it, like, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the yeah, maintainers could do it, like, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first it's just being attacked that he was like, like any one of the yeah, maintainers could do it, like, but we make those available so that we can make ourselves maintainers available to help people uh, get involved in projects. And so October 1st is this year, uh, the first encoding to get involved, like someone on, uh, we had our October 1st special last week and someone was like, oh, actually no, it was only two days ago. And someone was like, oh, look, I'm a Python developer, but I'm not very good. Like I want to, um, I want to contribute, but I don't, I don't really feel confident in my coding skills. And I was like, well, you know, people are there to help you, but also check out this project. This is a project that's saying, hey, you don't even have to write code. You just have to look at our Python scripts and then like write better comments like on the script. It's like, well, that's a really good one for developers who might not be confident in their code because usually you can read the code and you can like write better documentation. So, yeah, I think it's like there's just so many ways to get involved, even if you're not a developer. And I just really encourage anyone who's thinking about, or maybe I could, could you like just go for it? Um, and I think that's just the best thing to do is just, just yeah, get out there and start. Like I, like, I tell people this all the time, right? So I got started out, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new to the open source space, like five years or so. And I got started just contributing to docs. Right, so like I would go and I would see issues in docs, and I would just proceed to just fix them. Like I was, you know, or either it's building new docs or, you know, adding sections to them or updating them. And at that point in time, it just made things substantially easier. Like I got to meet folks on the team, I got to, uh, you know, do all sorts of fun things, and then I just started to build kind of the courage to start contributing to other things. Right. Like, I tell people this all the time, right? Like, you don't have to be super technical to, to contribute. Like, you can do docs. You can do, um, you can do user experience and testing and all that sort of grand thing. So, like, it's it's super important, right, to, 
to think about what you can do in that space that's not just writing code, which I think is super. And cool. and I think a lot of projects too is like not even necessarily one hundred percent like contributing by writing, but contributing by you know now there's a lot of projects that are starting discussions. Um, contributing by being part of the discussion, contributing by you know even requesting a feature. People don't realize that requesting a feature is so valuable oh, to sure. the people who are running the project. And like for example, we just announced. open source yeah, and super awesome. it's like there's so many ways that we're asking people to contribute like obviously yeah sure go you know write documentation um you know be involved like the, it, there's markdown obviously so it's really easy to contribute there but even go, go and request a feature um like that that is just as good you know, go be part of the discussions that is just as good as you know actually opening the pull request to change the thing so there's so many ways to be involved in a community without actually opening the pull request. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's totally true, right? I think one of the things that's super interesting as well just about contributing in general is that one thing that I've noticed is somebody who manages a not super popular but popular enough uh, um, GitHub repo called Presence Light. Most of the people that come to my repo are people that found it through the Microsoft Store. And they're like, oh, I would love this one particular feature. And I'm just like, OK, well, uh, PRs are welcome. And the first thing they yeah. respond usually is like, well, I'm not technical. I'm like, OK, well, uh, let's just chat about what you're trying to do. And um, I've talked with a lot of maintainers that they, they tell me it's like it's a very slippery slope, right? Like when you have a, 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 um, when you have a very popular repo, it can ex be very challenging to kind of do that but at the same time I think that's where discussions is super valuable right like mm -hmm. you know does this feature you know does it hold water like do we want to add this to embedder the the community of folks that use this um, but yeah like I love it like one of the things that it, it's funny with uh, with the stuff that I work on is people will come to it and they're like this is great but and it, originally it was like oh, I don't really like that can you not say but and just kind of just tell me how great it is? But I've started to learn that it's like people, when they come to something and they see it basically do exactly what they want except for one thing, it means that they're passionate enough to even ask. They don't even have to, right? They could just move on to something else. So I think that's something to really call out as well, right? Like we can definitely be cranky about people opening up issues, um, but at the same time, like they're opening up issues because they care. And that's part of the, the big things about community, right, is that care, is caring is very important. Mm -hmm. I totally want to answer the question in chat, all the um, comment in chat that Dan's got about uh, open source contributions are usually doc corrections and typos. Um, but yeah, so the reason why um, a lot of that you might see that, you know, Hacktoberfest is not appreciative on Twitter is because a lot of people use that as spam. Um, so people go in, like, they'll just spam, you know, typo corrections, like, a dot. Um, and just to get, like, again, Hacktoberfest was started to get people involved in open source. And the majority of people do it the right way. The majority of people are like you, Dan. They'll go and make the corrections and the typos, and they're doing it all year round. Um, the majority of people will go and, you know, contribute really meaningful contributions and pull requests and things like that. Um but there is a very, very small percentage of the community um, that will essentially ruin it for everyone else. And so a lot of people open up those spammy pill requests and like there's literally just like, it was one particular person, um, not gonna talk about it too much, but basically that's why we made Hacktoberfest opt-in only. Yeah. Um, so Dan, if there are Hacktober, or if there are open source contributions that you're doing that are typos um, and doc corrections on projects that are opt-in only and especially when they're calling it out definitely go and do that like I know Superbase was like on their Hacktoberfest board they're like we would love you to go through our docs and you know make suggestions and changes um, and in particular especially if you're doing docs contributions a lot of Hacktoberfest um, contributions will actually ask you to um, you know, 
can you add this particular feature to our docs? You know, we want someone to document this user experience. So go and have a look at what they're actually asking for uh, as opposed to just opening up um, pull requests for corrections and typos. But it's people like you, Dan, that are doing the right thing and you know are contributing all year round and are making people's lives better. So absolute yeah. kudos to you. And then uh, Mr. Marcos is asking, any thoughts on how to select a project? Yeah. Um, start with a big known project or a small initiative? I mean, it really depends. Like what you either know or want to know. Yeah. Um, so if you look at any repo, down the side, it'll have the percentage of languages that that is written in. So if it's 99% JavaScript and you don't want to do JavaScript, probably not the repo for you, right? Um, but other ways to find really good projects is look at the actual um, project itself and does it feel welcoming? Yeah. Does it have a readme? Does it have a contribution um, guide? Does it have guidelines on what to do to open a pull request or be part of the community? Um, when was the last contribution made? Like. There is obviously pros and cons to going for a big community or a small community. Obviously, with a small community, you want to make sure that that's still active, right? Exactly. Um, if it is active, you might find that you're getting you get more love from other people because it's small and you can actually you know chat to one another. Whereas a big project, you might find that you you might get lost within the crowd. But also, the, there's the the flip side of that is that you're surrounded by so much talent. Um, and your changes and your contributions are going to be felt like almost immediately. And then if something does go wrong, there's a million people around there to help you. Um, so there's pros and cons to both, but basically just go for something you're passionate about. Yeah, and everything that Michelle said is completely spot on. There's a couple of things that I, I want to put my perspective on too. Like I think one thing that's, especially when it comes to like the option only stuff, right? Like I know that in the past, like, obviously Hacktoberfest, there's some gamification, right? Like, so some people will just open tons of PRs, right? I think that's that's a thing that happens, and, you know, that's part of doing business. Um, and it's it's a bummer, but at the same time, it's people end up finding out what the kind the quote-unquote bad actors are, right? And that, you know, the developer community does a really good job of weeding out bad actors, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. And, you know, to the extent about, like, small project or big project, one thing that I will say about bigger projects is that most of them have contribution guides. So one mm -hmm. thing that I will definitely call out is, like, if you do want to take part in a larger community, which I highly recommend if that's something that you want to do, be sure that you're looking at their contribution guides. Because what will end up happening, more cases than not, is if you open up an issue that doesn't, or a pull request that doesn't fit their contribution guide, it'll just get auto-closed. Maybe even by a bot or by a maintainer, they'll just say, nope. Um, and, you know, that could be disheartening for somebody who's coming into a, a, a situation, right, trying to, to join the community. But quite frankly, if you manage a project that has, you know, thousands of issues and at any point in time, 100 pull requests and, you know, tons of contributors, yep. like it's crazy. there's just too much noise if people don't follow the rules, right? So that's one thing that I will say is the smaller projects, they typically don't do a lot of contribution guides. Um, they do most for some situations, but they're a little bit more lax. Where else We're finding, yeah, a lot more projects are doing contribution guides now. And that's what I was saying on um, the stream the other day as well as like, make sure you do go and read that guide. Even if you're um, someone who's contributed to other projects before, go and read each project's contribution guide that you want to contribute to because they're all slightly different. Um, obviously, every community has their own little perks, little you know rules and you know culture as well. And so that's you know again one of the ways that you can pick a project that you want to work on is that's what I say. Like highly recommend, definitely read that guide and feel like is this the right fit for me? Do I want to be part of this? You know, based on what this guideline says so yeah. yeah it's a really really good like gauge on what the community is like yeah and github actually had like they have a few features that makes it super easy to figure this out too like sometimes even to the expect if you open up a new issue or you open up a new pull request like there's templates that are just there right so like yep. for instance like you know one of the things that i've been seeing a lot is like what type of issue are you opening up 
and like you'll go get you'll get brought to that that impl- that template picker guy, right? Where yep. you feature you know, requests, request, bug fix, right, spelling right. errors, exactly, like right? I think yeah, um, they're all there. Yeah, and it, like that's just a super way of GitHub kind of helping kind of quiet down the noise for contributors and maintainers because I do think that uh, especially for large projects, it can be quite challenging. I do, and I also do think one thing in particular that's one that's important to call out is that depending on who the community is for a particular project, like you want to be able to read the room too, right? Like if if you're coming into a project that is very, I guess you could say, very technical, right? Like maybe it's a compiler, or maybe it's you know you know a piece of Android or, or what have you, right? Like you want to read the room. And if you come in with the expectation of like, they might be welcome to new people or they might not be just because of the, the audience that they're trying to bring in for contributions, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, that's one thing. One thing I will say, like docs in general, like they're willing, they'll take anybody. <laughs> like, like, <Yeah. laughs> I, like I, I have a ton of friends on, on the Microsoft doc side, like they'll take anybody and they'll hold your hand. Like that's what they, that a good friend of mine did that for me, right? As I, I told him, I want to start helping with docs, he's like, okay, just open a pull request. And, you know, one of the things that he helped me with is figuring out like the right pros, because if you haven't known for a lot of Microsoft docs, like they follow a very particular language guide. Um, Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware of that. And yeah, just as simple as like the tense of different things, like you don't use the word we, or you don't use the word I and things like that. And, you know, that's something that's very important to learn, but for the most part, the folks that are on Docs teams, not just at Microsoft, but I'm guessing GitHub is the same way and every other yeah, organization. Yeah, I was say, like, you know, we yeah. just launched ours for open source and the team is like there and ready to help anyone who wants to contribute. And we've got, I can't talk too much about some of the cool things that are planned for Docs in the future, yeah. but, you know, if you yeah, want to be part of it, there's people there that are going to help you, um, you know, be part of that um, community and help you through it you know, help you write your know, better documentation. And like, that's what they're there for. That's what the community is there for. They're there to help one another out. And that's why I absolutely love. In fact, I wrote a Dev2 post on this literally yesterday about one of the things I love about the open source community is they're just here to help everyone out. I'm like, this is just so cool. I mean, I'm just blown away. I still am blown away by the amount of like willingness of other people to come in and just give up their time to help yeah. other people. Like, you know, I... One of the reasons I live stream my coding is because I'm terrible at it. Yeah. And people come in, they're like, oh, you missed the semicolon. It's like, oh, it's like, why is this whole code not working? Oh, you spelt your thing wrong there and not there. And it's yeah. like, oh, wow. And like, that's what I love about the community is that they're all just here to help one another out. Like somebody came and was like, oh, hey, this is a not a bad way of writing C sharp, but do you want a better way of writing? I'm like, yes, yeah. please teach please, me. Yeah. And people are just sitting there in a chat for like an hour just helping me like rewrite my C-sharp code and making it like so much better. I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. Like who wouldn't want to be a part of that? And the open source community is just, is just like that. I love it. Yeah. I think it, there's also like a little bit of like people give themselves a little fist pumps too, right? So like if you're watching somebody's live stream and you see that they're struggling and you're like, just add a colon right there. And it's like, yeah. yes, things are solved, right? I think that's one yeah. of the big things too is like the community is really big on being thankful and calling out people when they do the right thing. Like the, that's one of the big things. Like one of the things that I do, so I'm on the .NET Foundation. Um, I work on the marketing committee. One of the projects that we've spun up recently is this thing called Project Spotlight, which uh, calls out projects that are part of the .NET Foundation and just basically raise awareness, right? And Every single person I talk to, it's very simple. They say, yeah, like everybody is super, super nice and super, super thankful. And then they get really, really excited when yeah. they get acknowledged, right? So like <laughs> we, we say, like call out your top contributors to your project. Like, you know, it's one of the things that people love to be recognized for doing things, especially in their free time. Because, you know, unfortunately not everybody gets to work and be open in open source land <laughs> as a job. I know, some right? People like us <laughs> um, but i think it's it's one of those things where the people that don't have that luxury like they're even more heroes right like saying on the shoulders yeah. thing is is so true 
Um, I would say if anyone's ever on any of my live streams, uh, I am all, I'm calling every single person out. I remember once we had, um, I was trying to get this code working and I had no idea what was going on. And I had about 30 other developers all in the chat. It was really funny too, because I kind of just sat back and watched and like everyone was kind of arguing about what the best way to do things was. <laughs> I was like, all right. Let's do it this way. All right, let's go from the top down. All right, we're going to choose your solution first. We're going to try that. Yeah. Okay, that didn't work. We're going to go for yours. There. I like, we just went through every single verse. It was super fun. So if anyone's ever on my live streams, you will always get a shout out for me. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's, it's important, right? Like I think people, like I said, people like to be acknowledged when they do the right thing. But one thing to say as a part of that, people do not like being called out when they do the wrong thing. So be very careful, be very careful in that space, right? We're all, I know I, I know we're all friends, but at the same time, some people aren't huge fans of like, a don't do that or a you probably shouldn't do that. So it's I you know one thing that you said is like oh you're like if somebody says oh you're doing this wrong right the way that you approach that is substantially important right. Oh uh, yeah, exactly, and I think like everyone on my streams has been amazing, but like for example, I wrote a dev two post and someone was like, so one of the comments was, oh that's wrong you should have done it better and i was like well if you were gonna say that like what why would you like provide an example and i was like uh okay sure would you like to provide an example it's like oh whatever it's like 10 times better if you had done it a different way and it's like well that's not useful and it, like that's one of the reasons why i don't mind and i know some people which is why if anyone else here is going to go drop in on any of the live coders make sure you do ask um i've I'm one of those people I don't mind. Like, if you come in and say, hey, you missed a semicolon, be like, oh my gosh, thank you. Whereas yeah. other people are like, uh, why are you helping me? So I know some people really dislike the backseat programming. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like some people dislike backseat gaming, but I am 100% up for backseat programming. Um, so yeah, anytime anyone is free that you want to come drop it on in my stream, we do Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, Ruby, I did a bit of PHP, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, I just uh, we started doing um, Vue the other day as well, Vue.js. So um, I just t tackle anything yeah. pretty much. I think <laughs> also like it's very helpful for folks that they see, like you mentioned, like some programming languages that you're you know stronger with, and others that you're not. Right? Like seeing people struggle is um, it's su <laughs> it's super cool to an extent, right? Like. There are some yeah. times where I'll, I'll be watching a friend live stream and they're struggling and I just like, I got to get in the chat immediately. Like, because sometimes it's okay to let people kind of figure things out on their own. But I was having a conversation with a colleague and he's like, I can't stand watching people struggle on live stream. Like it's painful. And I said, why? He's like, <laughs> I, I, I do the whole like, people help yeah, me exactly. out here, please. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Like, uh, so it's funny because one, one of the things when I was building out, um, working on the keynote that we just did for Ignite is I had to write some Python and I was help working with some other folks and like literally like I'm not the best Python developer. Like I can hack, hack things together with the best of them, but I'm just staring at this like thing and he's staring at this thing and I'm like, do you think the indentation's wrong? He's like, ah, uh, sure. And he like literally like one space fixed. It's just yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I found that with um, Vue because everything's written in like JavaScript containers. If you're literally missing like a comma or a semicolon, the entire site won't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> so yeah. it's like, wow. That's what's great about Wow, this. one tiny little thing breaks everything. Yeah, that's what's great about JavaScript <laughs> in general is that like things will just like look wrong on the page and you really will and sometimes you won't get any help right you'll look is like i i got nothing so what i've ended up doing recently is i literally like before i even load the page i'll like pull up dev tools and it's like okay does like the whole page render because if the whole page doesn't render yeah. i'm doing something wrong right um yeah awesome like this has been super fun and like i know that we're running close to the end of time right and one of the things that it's really important for you know for you to get across to the to folks is like how can we get up how can we follow you like i know that you 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 do live stream you're on twitter you're you know you probably have a pinterest and you probably Everywhere. have every everything right uh but like what's the best way? Pretty much. Yeah, what's the best way to get in contact with you 
Um, so Twitter is really good. So Mish Manners at Twitter. Um, so same as like this here. Um, you can contact me there. I am often respond more to my DMs on Twitter than I do my emails because there's just a sea of emails. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Um, and you can find me on Instagram. Obviously, Twitch, for those people listening on Twitch, you can find me Mishman. But basically, Mishman is on every platform. Yeah. Whatever platform. Obviously, GitHub as well. Yeah. So um, follow me on any of those platforms. And, yeah, I'd love to hear from people and things that you're interested about open source. I've also started writing. I did mention on um, Dev2. So I've got lots of posts on Dev2, especially for, like, how to get involved in something, a lot of stuff on there for like new developers. You can like follow that same kind of path if you're keen to like learn a new language or get involved with a project or whatever. So yeah, follow me and I'd love to see from you and hear from you and yeah, a hopefully things. get to catch up with people like you guys are like IRL at some point. Yeah. Oh, please. Oh, well, maybe I'll just move to Australia. Like I've heard that there's really scary spiders and snakes down there, but like yeah, you know, compared fine. to what's going on in the U S like I would take spiders and snakes all day. Um, a couple of things to call out real quick. Like we can just tell how professional Michelle is because she knows exactly like where the thing is over her head. Very spot on with that. <laughs> Cause you know exactly where that is. And then also another really important thing that I found out recently is you got to be the same persona everywhere, right? You got to be Mish Manners everywhere. Yeah. Like I literally, yeah. I literally went through a purge about a year ago, went through like all my socials and just changed them. Um, yeah. I, and, I, fun fact, I own the trademark to Mish Manners as well. Now. Of course you do. Like, so, so like, <laughs> do you get like, is it like, like the patent office where they send you something cool in the mail that you frame or is it just like, Oh, okay. Uh, it's literally just you get an email being like, congrats, you got your IP. Oh, like, you trademark, go. well done. <laughs> it's like, oh. I, would really go. I mean, if you do, like, the business name registration, you get the, like, the certificate that you can theoretically frame. Yeah. Um, but, no, everything else is just an email. Email, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, typically what we do when we, when we wrap up the stream with our friends is, you know, I like to get one word from you on what open source means. It could be any word, but the goal is to be as short as possible. So if if you could describe open source in one word or maybe one or two words, what would that be? It'd be collaborative. Yeah. Most likely. Or you could also use the word community, but I like the word collaborative better because it yeah. describes what the community does. So collaborative. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And it's, it's very spot on. Like we've done a handful of these interviews and it's very tied to like the same five words, right? You know, whether it's community and collaboration or freedom or, or all these sort of things that are just enabling, right? And I think that's what the key thing to call out about open source is that it's for everybody and there's there's no barriers to it. So I, I think that's, you know, it's with the help of folks like you that are literally out there on every channel possible trying to get the word out. So, you know, you know, Michelle, I want to thank you so much for joining the stream today. And, you know, we'll be sending some stuff out. So obviously it's Mish Manners everywhere. So I'm get pretty yep. sure if you just, you know, use your favorite search provider um, of choice that's, uh, you know, built by Microsoft, uh, it'll say, <laughs> Love if, it. if you just say Mish Manners and they'll probably be like the first 15 links, uh, you'll get right to Michelle, I'm guessing. So, you know, get on that. Thank you so much and thanks for having me on here. It was really fun to chat to you and talk to everyone about open source. And again, my final piece of advice, if there's something you want to do, just the only barriers yourself, just go and do it, yeah. seriously. Awesome. People are there to help you. Well, thank you so much again, Michelle, and for everybody. This will go on YouTube later and enjoy the rest of your day and have yeah, keep it up open source. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.